Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Praetorian and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4. So we're going to be playing as the United States in this campaign and unlike a lot of uh, people on YouTube, I'm, I'm going to be doing a democratic United States. I noticed that a lot of people play as fascists or they play as communists uh, when they do at the USA. Uh, we're going to do a good old democratic one. Uh, this has been on my uh, to-do list for a very, very long time. Something uh, A campaign I've really been wanting to play on the channel for a while. Last time I played the USA, I think I played as fascist as well. Well, uh, and I know a lot of people have been asking for a either a democratic USA or a democratic United Kingdom uh, playthrough. Well, I've decided to go with the US way, USA one, uh, just because I think it's been done a little bit less on uh, YouTube. So if you're sitting here wondering yourself, why are we playing a USA vanilla uh, playthrough rather than the original plan? Uh, I should have a video up uh, with, along with this one that is explaining why we're doing uh, this campaign instead of the the intended one with the the mod and Turkey and all that good stuff. And so go, I'm not going to go ahead and explain that a second time. Uh, that's why I put that video up. So go ahead and check that out if you're wondering what is going on right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop on into this we're gonna do a new campaign here in 1936 we play with the United States uh, and then over here on the difficulties we're gonna go and tick Germany up too because we did we did get a really good challenging uh, Germany uh, when we did that last time and I think that was with Australia in the Australian campaign so we're gonna do it again uh, just take Italy up one uh, Soviet Union can be one as well um, you know what, we're not gonna take France up. We're gonna let France fold up. We'll go to take the UK up. United States will stay the same. Uh, Japan, we'll go ahead and get them. Uh, let's do let's do two for for Japan, and we're gonna do one for uh, China over here. Yeah, so we're, we're taking Jap Germany and Japan up. They should both be relatively challenging. We should have a good, strong Axis uh, Axis powers here. Okay, so that's looking good. Uh, we're going to play on regular. Um, anything else here that we need to do? No, I think we're good. We're going to leave the historical AI focuses off just so we get nice uh, randomness going on here. And I think everything else should be good to go. Let's go and get this started, guys. So in this uh, you know first video here, we're going to play a little bit longer than we usually do, about 45 minutes um, or something like that. I usually try and do this first episode a little bit longer since we are start, starting a new campaign here. Uh, and so we'll probably get through maybe a year, year and a half or something like that. Um, yeah, what does that see? Uh, let's go ahead and get our text selected first. We're gonna be focusing on the engineering and the industry uh, text first. Let's go and grab that one up. Uh, and then over here for industry, grab the basic machine tools. Good grab the uh, support equipment up, you know, the BARs and stuff. That's always good to go. We don't really have any experience for, you know, making new divisions and stuff, adding new support categories though. Those are of course things that we're gonna wanna and want to get here. I think I'm gonna wait to get the ships in the, in the planes because I want to get the uh, the you know design companies first before we go researching those. So we're not gonna work on those. Same thing with tanks. Uh, not gonna work on that either. I suppose yeah, we'll go ahead and get get this. Why not? Let's just improve our infantry. Might as well. Um, yeah, that's looking good. And then let's go and get our civilian factories working. Now one of the things I noticed that they changed here, which is really really cool, is that the infrastructure now uh, improves your ability to build in certain areas. So it's it's actually harder to construct. It takes longer, I should say. It takes longer to construct in areas with low infrastructure, building factories and stuff, which is really, really cool. It makes a lot of sense. And also you can construct faster in areas that have very high infrastructure. This is really awesome. I'm glad that they changed this. And I believe it does apply to all the factories, right? Yes, it does. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's cool. I like that change. And this is actually the first time I've noticed it, probably because I haven't played Hearts of Mind for a couple weeks now. Uh, let's go ahead and get some civilian factories built. We're gonna go just build them all along here, I suppose. I think that'll work out nicely. We're just trying to get a bunch of them. Yeah, let's get a bunch of civilian factories. Uh, yeah, that's looking good. I guess we can get one more over here in South Carolina. Yeah, and one more in Florida as well, and in Alabama. Why not? All right, excellent. So we're going to have a bunch of civilian factories building up over here. Uh, actually, it gets Louisiana as well. Uh, and then we're going to go and get our military factories assigned. So what we got working with right now, we have two going towards the infantry equipment. Okay. Uh, one in the support, one in towed, and one going towards these carrier fighters. All right. So we're probably going to want to build and get a few other things going here. Um, do we want the great war tanks? No, I don't, I don't think we do. I uh, got the interwar fighters. They're pretty terrible. I think we're going to get close air support though. Yeah, we need a lot of planes. Uh, so let's go and get the uh, close air support going. Um, what else do we want to get? Maybe the... Uh, no, nah, we'll get naval bombers. Yeah, of course. Gotta get the naval bombers. Though maybe we should focus on the carrier naval bombers instead. We're going to go get both of them for now. Uh, anything else that we want to get here? I think we're looking good. Yeah, I think I think this will work out nicely uh, for now. Uh, as far as the ships go, we're currently building destroyer ones over here and submarine twos and heavy cruiser ones. Okay, I think that'll work out fine for right now. Uh, I don't think we'll just get them going affinity like this, infinite. 
um, and place them. Where do we want our, our navies assembling? I suppose right now we'll, with the fleet uh, assembling over here in California, maybe in San Francisco or something like that. I think that'll probably work. Or LA, why not? Let me just see which port is larger. I think San Francisco is the larger port. No, it's not. Okay, uh, we'll do LA then. Uh, let's let's get them going and just my bad. Uh, let's get them assembling into LA if I can just click on that. There we go. Excellent. Uh, everybody's coming over here to California. Okay, nice. Um, yeah, we'll just get all these building um, until uh, they cannot build any longer. Uh, I would also like to get. Wow, we got a lot of different classes here for the battleships and stuff. All right, so we'll do the Colorado class of the battleships. I think that they have the the highest of the uh, naval firepower, so we're gonna go ahead and get those. Uh, as far as our carrier twos, do we have any carriers building? Let me just check here, no we don't. So we're gonna go ahead and get a couple of these, I think. Um, yeah, I think that'd be wise. Let's get a couple of them. We don't have a lot of dockyards, um, you know, more than a lot of countries start out with, but probably not gonna be having enough to build everything I'm trying to build here, but it'll be fine. We're gonna get dockyards building up soon. Uh, as far as which one of these two classes we wanna get between the Yorktown and the Rangers, uh, let's just see, This I think they're both the same HP, both 325 here, armor's 9.4 on that one um, over here it's nine so let's go with the Yorktown class okay excellent uh, and then yeah we're gonna want to get these planes going up I always keep my ships down here at the bottom uh, because why not let's go and tick all those down to the bottom uh, and then yeah the carrier fighters that's looking good um, yeah I think all this will work out nicely okay so we have two factories left to assign here let's go and put that one into the support equipment and I guess one more into the infantry equipment we're not gonna be able to build any units for quite some time guys it's it's gonna be a while before we're able to get any uh, let's put most of these into the uh, uh, carriers, I think. I'm actually going to tick these up to the top. Carriers are awesome. Uh, so let's make sure that they're nice and up there high. Uh, also want to get ourselves some convoys going, obviously. Got to have the convoys. Uh, but yeah, I think this is uh, looking good here. Let's get like five going towards the carriers. And like, no, not going to build that much. Maybe three going towards the battleships. And, well, we don't have any towards submarines. Okay, I think this is looking pretty good. Uh, we want to get a good uh, amount of destroyers. I notice we don't have any light cruisers going. Okay, I probably want to get some, although I don't see... Here we go. We got the light cruiser 2s, the Brooklyn class. Let's go ahead and get those going up here as well, uh, which means we're going to have to pull from those destroyers just a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think that this is looking pretty good here. Yeah, I like this. This, this will work out nicely. Uh, let's, let's go like this. Okay, excellent. Uh, submarines can go ahead and tick down ahead of the bottom. You know what? I don't even know if I'm going to concentrate on submarines that much. We're only going to put one towards submarines, I think. Uh, and let's put that towards carriers because I really want to get some of, our, of those building out. Okay, this is looking good here, guys. We are looking a little bit short on some of our resources on the rubber and the chromium here. Uh, I suppose we'll go ahead and trade for both of those, even though we might not need need the uh, rubber. It's not looking too bad here. Uh, we'll go with the British Malaysia. Sure, why not? And then we need the chromium as well. Don't have to trade for that very often. Uh, do we want to trade with the Soviet Union, or would we rather trade with somebody else? Uh, yeah, let's not trade with the Soviet Union. Let's trade with the United Kingdom instead. I'm tempted to train with Turkey since that's, you know, the country that we're looking to play with in our next campaign here. Uh, so for the national focus, we're going to go for WPA, uh, get that political power. Very, very helpful early on there. Um, and, oh yes, let's go ahead and get all of our troops training up. Oh, that's not going to let me do it that way. Okay, get all these guys. Everybody uh, is going to be added into one army here. Because I know that, oh well, a few of these guys are actually trained. We'll go through them and look to see uh, who doesn't need to train any further in a second. Um, we got one guy over here as well, and there's somebody in Alaska. Okay, excellent. I think that's everybody. Nope. Gotta get Panama and, and uh, the Car Caribbean. Anywhere else? No. Good to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and take out anybody who's currently trained up. We've got a couple of them. Uh, and that's it. Okay, let's go ahead and throw them into an army. We're going to get these guys training up here. Uh, they're going to be our peasants. Peasant force. Uh, but they won't be peasants for much longer. Okay, excellent. So they're going to be training up, getting us a little bit of army experience, and also making sure that they don't suck. Okay, excellent. So I think we did everything we need to do. Yeah, all right, so we're going to put this on speed five here. Just let it fly, try and make a little bit of progress through the years here. Um, should, uh, like I said, should be able to get through... At least to early 1937 is what I'm guessing. Because, uh, yeah, not a lot of things are going to be happening. We are playing as USA. USA is a bit of a slower playthrough, guys. It really is. Uh, and, you know, I was really torn between whether I wanted to do the USA 
or the um, uh, United Kingdom, because the United Kingdom's a little bit more of an exciting playthrough right in the beginning, uh, because you know you, you jump in the war much, much sooner, while here in the USA one, we're probably not going to be joining the war until, well, I'm going to try and join as soon as possible, guys. Uh, we're not going to be sitting on the sideline and preparing or anything. Uh, we're going to try and jump into the war as soon as we possibly can, uh, so we definitely need to prioritize our national focuses towards, you know, trying to get uh, into the war as quickly as we can, um, of course, because, yeah, I, I don't remember which one of these removes, because there's a national spirit uh, that really makes it difficult to join factions, the Great Depression here, uh, and I don't remember which one of our national focuses. Get rid of that. Looks like Italy has now defeated Ethiopia. Uh, 7th of March, that's pretty good, AI Italy. Not bad at all. Um, and, yeah, I'm just going to go through here and try and see... Uh, and we did finish the WPA, which is nice because we are in this national focus tree right now. So we can do the committee here, and this is going to give us research bonuses for electronics and support technology, something we probably definitely want. Uh, over here, this would be good as well. I think we're going to go for this one uh, first. Yeah, let's go and grab that one up. Uh, and then we got the 150 political power now to go ahead and add somebody. And I think it's it's obvious we should add the silent workhorse. I was like doing that right from the start. Uh, make sure that we can get our, our political power going up as quickly as possible because um, we are not putting very much uh, up right now because of the Great Depression. The Great Depression is negative one. Uh, so yeah, it's going to take us a very long time to get any political power to really do anything, uh, unfortunately, until we get rid of that Great and the uh, Great uh, Depression thing. I, I don't know. Okay, we got that. Let's go ahead and pick something else here. Uh, I'm trying to look for that dang uh, national focus that we need to get rid of that. I believe it's a na national focus. I could be wrong, though. Uh, let's see. Let's get the research time, of course. Why would we not? Okay, um, yeah, I want to say it is. I could be completely wrong. We're just going to swing through here, though, because I really want to see, and plus this will kind of show you guys uh, what we can get from these things. Obviously, we'd love to get some more rubber over there in Kentucky, so that might be something you want to get. Um, Justify War Gold time for Manifest Destiny is really useful. Uh, the nice thing about America, the really cool thing about America is they're, like, I think they're the only one that can get the six research slots, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, we got our intervention here. Yeah, I do not remember. Huh. All right, well, yeah, if you guys happen to recall, I know there's something in here that get, gets it to you, gives it to you. I, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I could be wrong, though. It could be, uh, could be something else. I don't really remember. It's been too long. Uh, but I thought it was a national focus. We now have quite a few technologies done here. Let's go ahead and get something else selected. And there's not really any reason for us to, to build a lot of these things here, or to, to research a lot of these things here, because we can't really build units because we don't have any manpower. We're going to go ahead and get this just because that kind of limits us on the support, um, you know, support groups that we can get. So I think we should get that kind of early on here. Uh, anything else you might want to grab up kind of early? Um, maybe, yeah, maybe want to go ahead and start working towards something over here. Now, I almost always go with the concentrated industry ones here, uh, but I'm kind of tempted to go for this one just because we have so many states as America. And then the other thing is they have really been boosting dispersed industry a lot. Uh, if you look at the factory outputs, now it's only 5% difference, which is is tremendous. That's that's great. Uh, but look at all the things that you're getting with this one. You know, before it was just that, that bomb vulnerability, which, you know, if you're not going to get bombed, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but now we're looking at production efficiency base, production efficiency retention. All that stuff is, is really, really good. Um, so it makes me really tempted to, to go for this one um, just because we have so many states here. Seems like it could be incredibly useful. Um, you know what? We're going to go for Dispersed. This is like the first time I think in a Let's Play I've ever gone for Dispersed because, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really a big fan of that one. But with them boosting it, we're going to try it out. Uh, what's the worst, worst that can happen? You know, we're, we're America, guys. It's it's really not a problem. <laughs> we got the committee here, um, which is going to give us some nice research bonuses. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get Support Rock Island. Uh, but before we grab that up, let me just see what else we have available here. We have the Air War Plans Division. Um, and, yeah, this one is very, very useful. Um, also, the Bureau of Ships. Um, that would be nice to have. Uh, relatively early on too, you know, allow us to produce our ships much, much quicker. Uh, and then of course we can get the reaffirm the Monroe Doctrine, which would allow us to trade, you know, have better uh, trade opinion with all the American nations. Uh, you know, these things here, they can be important and stuff, but this is one that uh, we're not going to put any kind of priority on right now. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and go for this one first, and then maybe then 
uh, we'll look at going towards one of those two. Plus, we don't really have too many options available to us. America's really kind of locked uh, on what it can do early on, and I think it's pretty fitting as well. I think that they should be uh, fairly locked on, you know, uh, locked in what they can do uh, in the early game because, it, it, you know, obviously America is a beast, and it must be limited. Um, yeah, early on or else it's it's just going to take over uh far too quickly um and you know america on the hands of the ai is absolutely terrible uh they are really 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 bad uh but you put this america in the hands of a player and it can get ridiculous i don't know if you guys play any multiplayer um uh, but yeah it uh it's, whoever has the u.s man they just have such capacity. Soviet Union can also be extremely deadly in the hands of a player. Now, Germany. Germany has the, the potential to be very powerful, but the thing is, whenever you see in the multiplayer, is they, people always ganging up on Germany. Uh, and then they have those, those you know, multiple fronts and stuff. And it can be very, very challenging, especially if you have, like, a Soviet Union player and a France player. Yeah, it can be difficult. Uh, I think we're going to go with the... Uh, we can go excavation. Sure, why not? Uh, maybe we won't have to trade so much for so many things here as we're building out factories. Uh, let's just take a look at how we're doing on getting those civilian factories built out. Yeah, we're doing pretty nicely here. Uh, right now, we currently have 142 civilian factories. Now, it seems like a lot, and the reason why we really can't build much right now is because uh, we have free trade. Um, and with free trade, it just doesn't, it doesn't allow you to make use of very many of your factories, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, we're getting all these guys trained up here. We currently have 17, almost 18 uh, army experience, which is nice. We'll be able to make a few adjustments to our divisions, uh, though it's really not much of a priority. Uh, the divisions aren't excellent, as you can see. They're they're not not great here uh, at all. It's pretty. I mean, I guess they're they're better than some places. Uh, it could be worse, of course. Uh, it looks like we got our national focus. Let's go ahead and select something here. Uh, so yeah, there's nothing else available on this side of things. Now we do need to move over to this branch. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to go with the the Bureau of Ships. Yeah, let's go and get that. We're going to have a very powerful navy, guys. Kind of have to have a very powerful navy. Uh, we need to defeat Japan. Um, Japan can can be difficult to defeat in the, the seas. They do have a considerably sized navy themselves. And now we have the Spanish Civil War breaking out. All right, excellent. Uh, what will it mean for Spain? So National Spain has, uh, you know, declared war on Republican Spain here. And we got the uh, yeah the communist and the fascist sides here. Uh, National Spain almost always wins. I'm always curious to see what happens though, because I think I want to say in one of our campaigns we did have, and we got the Olympic Games here. Okay, uh, German athletes saw the most success. Americans we came in second. Okay, um, but yeah, I want to say. God, I just don't remember. One of our campaigns, though, we did have the Republicans win, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, usually it's the Nationalists that win. And so, I mean, you can say that it might maybe it needs to be a little bit better balanced if they win a very high percentage of time. But at the same time, you probably want them to win the majority of the time, considering that's what happened historically. Uh, I prefer when the, it looks like most of these guys are, damn, uh, needs to be pulled out of here. Uh, but I prefer when you have historical things. Uh, I want them to happen most of the time. Not all the time. Uh, but I think that they should it should be more tended uh, trending towards going towards that uh, Hawaiian division is currently trained. Oh, man. We got another one just came up here as well Let's go and pull them out too. Uh, so yeah, we almost got everybody trained up here though Of course, they're not gonna stay trained up for very long uh, as we make adjustments to our divisions Which I'm sure we're gonna make plenty plenty of adjustments here uh, But yeah, getting a nice little uh, bit of army experience right here from the get-go uh, which is excellent. Um, I, like I said, I don't think we're going to do too many adjustments. Uh, and we can't really build anything right now. Uh, nothing that we can do. This manpower, it's that Great Depression uh, modifier. I really wish I was able to remember how the hell you get rid of that. I don't, I don't recall. I, I could have swore it was a national focus. And it looks like Germany has uh, remilitarized the Rhineland. And France and Britain have announced an alliance. Okay, I'm guessing that has something to do with uh, Germany remilitarizing their Rhineland over here. All right, well, let's see what happens there. Uh, if it will be an early war. Um, it could definitely be a 1937 war. I've seen it happen before. We have. Uh, what do we want to go with next? We could work on some of the ship stuff here. However, I think we're going to go ahead and go with the Air War Plans Division first. Let's go ahead and grab that up. Uh, just so we start producing these planes a little bit quicker. Because uh, we are attempting to get a nice little stockpile of planes going right now. Uh, but yeah, we're already getting getting a few over here. Uh, it's not, not great yet. Um, man, infantry equipment is really, really lacking. Okay, maybe I should have put a few more factories towards that. Uh, well, as we get our first military factories, we'll get those building out. I think this will be fine. We've got a whole lot of time before we join the war, guys. That's one of the things about America is you really don't have to be, like, racing to get everything done because you've got you got a lot of time, and you don't really have to worry about anybody invading you. Um, you know, I would really like to see, I would really like to see, like, 
France or something like or France, uh, like Canada or Mexico go like fascist so that we have to like fight them. That would be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we have the election in 1936 here. We're going to go ahead and read this. The day of the presidential election has arrived. Incumbent Franklin Delano Roosevelt has already implemented several of the programs referred collectively to as the New Deal, intended to take the U.S. out of the Great Depression. While many of the efforts have been popular, his plans to further extend the role and power of the government have been met with criticism uh, with his opponent, Republican Alf Landon. Coming from the oil industry, Landon wants to see greater economic freedom while Roosevelt and the Democratic Party want to expand Social Security and ensure economic stability. The election may be a close call or a major victory for the Democrats. Uh, so yeah, we can you know elect the Democrats here, which are going to get the New Deal spirit, which will increase our infrastructure construction speed and grant us 10% national unity, which would be nice because we're sitting at 60% right now. Or we can go with the Republicans. We must safeguard the ideals of the American system. Uh, and so yeah, we'll become the Republican Party. Uh, we'll get the Standard Oil of California, which is going to give us industrial research time uh, reduction at 10%. Uh, we're also going to get Alf London as a leader, and he is a staunch uh, constitutionalist, which will increase our ideology drift defense. Uh, I think we're going to stick with Roosevelt. Um, yeah, let's let's stick with Roosevelt. Why would we not? Why would we get rid of FDR? It's one of the great, greatest presidents in American history, though not everybody would. Uh, well, I mean, I think everybody would agree that he was a great president in a way, but not everybody agrees with many of the things he did for good reason. Um, we do have 50% bonuses here, not quite 1938, so we're not going to grab that up. Uh, we can go and get the reinforce rate. Look at the radio. Why not? It's only going to take 52 days as well. Uh, let's go and start working towards some other stuff here. I mean, a lot of these are in 1938. We can get the field hospitals, which I always like getting early on because field hospitals are fucking awesome. Uh, they're, they're just so uh, good. So helpful uh that i find and i think we're gonna probably concentrate on getting yeah i think we're gonna continue concentrating on uh this stuff here though we could get the artilleries too uh i think we're gonna get the support equipment i guess we'll go ahead and go with the logistic companies next uh, yeah we could also do maintenance come on guess we'll get those a little bit quicker because they have that 50 percent bonus uh what am, I, what am i replacing something i thought i had an open slot here did i click on the wrong thing i might have uh let's go and get this fixed all right maintenance company awesome uh going to get those now the thing about FDR is he drastically increased the scope and size of government. So if you're one of those people who don't agree that the government should be large and should be doing all the things that it does today and, you know, many of the things it started doing uh, at that time, then of course you're not really going to be a big fan of FDR. Um, and some of the things that he did are certainly questionable when it comes to the Constitution. So uh, I personally think FDR was a great president, uh, and I think his role in World War II kind of cemented that for me. Uh, but some people do disagree, and there are some reasons for that, um, of course. Uh, and, you know, like one of my, my uh, favorite all-time presidents, of course, everybody's, is, is, is Abraham Lincoln. I mean, Abraham Lincoln's awesome. Uh, he's not my favorite, but he's definitely up there. And what was that I just clicked on? I have no idea. Uh, we're just closing things like crazy. I should have read that. should have looked at what it was. Well, it's too busy talking uh but yeah is abraham lincoln abraham lincoln's another one who also did some very questionable things constitutionally uh what do we want to get next so here we can make the choice between the air support or the strategic bombing and uh, this kind of a permanent choice here you know whether we want to go with the more light bombers uh we will get tactical bombers here at the ends so a little bonus towards them uh or whether we want to go for the more heavier uh bombers here uh, there's some great bonuses on this side of things. I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking here. Uh, str strategic bombing can be immensely helpful uh, for sure, but these this this direction here helps your troops a little bit more if you want to actually win. Uh, but yeah, this this can be helpful too. I love doing strategic bombing more so as the UK. That's my favorite thing to do as Britain. Uh, I think we're gonna go with uh, something for our ships. Yeah, let's do the ships. I really want to focus on the Navy, and we already know we're going to go for the carriers. Uh, let's see which ones we're going to be researching first real quick. Let me just see what we have already. Uh, for the 1936, we don't have destroyers yet. Um, yeah, we don't have the heavy cruisers here. We don't have battleships. We do have the cruiser, the uh, carriers, though, so we're not going to get a carrier model, model until 1940 uh, available to us, so it wouldn't make a lot of sense to go for that right now. Uh, it's probably better to go for something else. Go for the Naval Doctrine. Uh, oh, yeah, let's go for this. Yeah, I like that one. Now, let's go for the es escort efficiency. We'll be able to produce destroyers a little bit faster. Okay, excellent. Uh, as you guys can see, the, the Nationals are clearly uh, losing here, um, which is interesting. Very, very interesting. We got excavation. Or, excuse me, I meant to say the, uh, <laughs> the Nationalists are, are winning, and the Republicans are clearly losing here. Excuse me. Got mixed up in my words there. Uh, but, yeah, the, the Republicans, you know, yeah, it's... They're always losing there. Um, let's see what we're going to do. What, what did we get? I don't, I don't even know. Uh, let's go with 
Um, I think we have an open something over here that we can grab. No, not quite. We're not in 1937. You know what? It's early enough that we can go and grab some stuff up. Yeah, I think that's fine. Let's go with the dispersed industry too. It's just a little bit ahead. It's not bad at all. Uh, or we can go with construction too as well. You know what? Let's go with construction too. So we can build up our factories a little bit faster. Uh, but yeah, we're already in almost in 1937 and we're only like two thirds of the way into the episode. So yeah, we've got quite a bit of time here. I don't know, maybe we'll get into, I don't know, that'd be awesome if we got into like, I don't know, mid to late 1937. That means we'd only be a couple of, maybe one more episode away from actually maybe the war breaking out, which is awesome because I really want to jump into this conflict. I'm ready to go to war, guys. It's been far too long since I played some Hearts of Iron. I, I'm feeling a little bit deprived just a little bit guys uh, because you know I've been working on that mod uh, which that mod man the mod has been a, uh, way more time than I was ever expecting it to be and then those videos too as well that I made um, the alternate history videos those took quite a bit of time too uh, a lot more than I was expecting though I did make them a lot more in depth than I had ever intended to do and these guys are all currently done we can actually just get rid of uh, all of these we don't need it anymore all right, excellent. We got the maintenance companies and the field hospitals as well. Uh, but yeah, they were really fun to do. I enjoyed doing those videos. Um, it's just a bummer that that kind of stuff takes so long. I guess we'll go and grab both of these up. Why not? Although, no, uh, yeah, it's fine. Let's go and grab the MPs up. I always make use of those. And then we're going to go with the logistics company as well. Uh, although maybe we shouldn't have spent so much on the support companies, considering the fact that we're in 1937. You know, we should probably change it up. Let's let's change the MPs to something else here. Uh, yeah, let's do the MPs. Uh, let's just change over to. I'm just gonna kind of swing through here and see uh, what exactly we might want to get. I think we should focus on getting uh, more industry. Uh, get the improved machine tools now. Uh, might as well. Yeah, let's change that up. Um, yeah, I think that'll work out nicely. I do like to focus on getting all that industry uh, in the early game here. But yeah, look at the Republicans, man. They're just getting their asses handed to them. Yeah, not doing too well at all. Okay, well, you never know. Maybe they'll turn around. <laughs> I wonder who has sent them support. Uh, looks like Germany and Italy, as per usual, in the Soviet Union over here. Okay, so yeah, pretty much everybody who usually supports them uh, does. And yeah, I wonder how many uh, troops they're currently getting right now. But yeah, as you guys can see, it's it's not looking very well. We're probably going to see another nationalist Spain here. Um, not that it really matters. They very rarely actually join the wars, uh, but sometimes they do, which is always a lot of fun when you see them actually get involved with the uh, uh, World War II. Uh, we got escort effort. Nice. Um, do we want to go with convoy tactics? Uh, we could get that uh, uh, Navy experience. You know, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and do some work on that, the air a little bit. And, you know, I was kind of asking you guys which one you think we should go with, but I, I kind of want to go ahead and pull the trigger on this now. Uh, I think we're going to go with the, the air support. I really, really like having the close air support and the ta tactical bombers, you know, be able to build a lot quicker. Uh, strategic bombers, yeah, they're important and all. I mean, it doesn't mean we're not going to use them because we definitely will. Uh, and it is nice getting that increased range for your strategic bombers, but they already have incredible range I mean, we can already hit germany from the united kingdom so uh yeah i don't really see you know why we'd go for this one uh, let's let's go for these ones uh you'll know th those ones get shot down far more your your uh close air support they they get shot down all the time so it would be nice to be able to produce those a little bit quicker i think that's the better route uh plus you get you know it's three national focuses as opposed to just two uh and and one of those national focuses is only range for your strategic bombers which you know like i said it's certainly useful um you know, you can hit targets from much farther away, but the main targets we're going to be trying to bomb is Germany, and we can do that from the United Kingdom. Of course, one problem, though, and one thing that that does help with is that the United Kingdom, uh, they their, their airports, their air bases get completely filled up, um, and then, yeah, a lot of times you aren't able to strike from there without facing a penalty. Uh, so there is that if you can use, you know, farther away airports, and, of course, that is quite useful. I guess we're going to get the uh, military police now. Okay, excellent. Yeah, that'll work. We'll use one of them for, you know, other things, and uh, then the other three for, like, the industry and the uh, electronic type stuff, engineering stuff. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, like I said, we don't have any manpower, so we really can't can't build any units right now. I'm not really going to bother, like, assembling them and stuff because we're still kind of pretty far out from us getting involved in the war. So we're not really going to assemble our troops or our navy or any of that good stuff. There's just really no point on, on uh, you know, wasting the time. We're just trying to fly through this as quickly as possible. And as you guys can see, man, yeah, we might finish two years of gameplay uh, in this episode, which is excellent because I always, I always want to get to that, that conflict, uh, which I could see the 
Pacific War breaking out in 1938. We'll just have to see what happens. Uh, I guess we could uh, see what happens, which Germany's currently working on their national focus. Uh, we got air support over here. We got the Hindenburg incident. Looks like the disaster was nearly averted. So the Hindenburg did not crash. Very close call, uh, but it didn't crash. Uh, let's get... Well, I mean, we could go with the research bonus for those. The, we already have the current model, so that's not going to be all that beneficial. Uh, tactical bombers, I think that one would be, though. Uh, and I think that might be exactly uh, what we're going to go for. Yeah, I think that'd be the best thing. Uh, could also the, do the reinform, uh, reaffirm Monroe Doctrine, and we might get that next. Uh, but let's go with the tactical bomber models first. That does give us a little bit of air experience as well. Not that I'm going to use it just yet. Uh, probably wait to use that on the fighters uh, once we get those. We got the Marco Polo Bridge incident. Okay, so yeah, we're going to be seeing war over here with China and Japan very soon. Okay, yep. Yeah, they've already taken all this territory here. Uh, I really hope that there's actually war between Japan and China and that they don't just puppet them. Yeah, there's going to be war with China. Uh, just kind of swinging around, seeing what everybody else is currently working on. Uh, Russia is, or Soviet Union, is looking for a navy. Uh, we've got improved machine tools. Let's go ahead and get something else here. Uh, I think that's it. Um, we could work on the synthetic oil experiments. Uh, I prefer personally trading uh, when I'm with the allies. Um, it's only when I'm playing as some one of the other factions that I'll you know tr make use of this. It's just easier to trade. It's better. It's more efficient uh, to trade and to build civilian factories instead. So uh, I think we're done here. Uh, yeah, until we're able to get this one uh, over here, uh, we could get the radio detection that is pretty useful to have uh, early on. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think we're gonna get that just yet. Uh, we could get artillery, um, because I don't know. Let me just take a look here, uh, what we're gonna be getting for our, our, uh, material designer. Uh, we have the infantry equipment, and we'll probably go for that. I, I think we will. So, we can go ahead and start researching artillery stuff. Why not? Let's get some better artillery. Uh, the interwar artillery, we'll get the anti-war and anti-tank and all that kind of good stuff as well. But this one, we got a nice 50% bonus, so I really want to use it. Not that our artillery is going to be firing shells on anybody in time soon. Really not going to be making use of it. Military factories is what the, Fran uh, the French are working on right now. Uh, fortify East Asia. Okay, interesting. So United Kingdom's concerned about uh, Japan and their actions. Uh, fortification effort over here in Italy. Got the military priests and the construction too. Okay, uh, let's get something else. Um, I don't... I'm probably not going to go for Signal Company. So I believe... Uh, we're good over here for right now, at least until 1939, which is quite some time away. Uh, not close enough to 1938 to work towards any of these other things. Uh, we do want to get the special forces, of course, and we might get those just because, because I don't really see anything else that we have to start working on right now. Um, we don't really have any of our benefits for this just yet, so I don't know that I want to start working on it yet, because uh, we could get some nice bonuses for that. Uh, same thing with the, the ships. don't really want to do that either, or the planes. Uh, we do have a bonus for this, so I think we should go for that. Yeah, since we have the bonus, uh, which one do we want to go with? We can go with the strategic destruction, the battlefield support, or the operational integrity. Do they have anybody who gives a bonus for that? Okay, so yeah, looking here in the theorist, they do have the victory through air power, so that's the strategic destruction doctrine. I don't know that we're going to be going for this on the theorist, but, you know, I do like to have that. If if I do decide to go for it, uh, we'll, we'll go for that. And you know what? Getting the strategic uh, ones, all these are fairly similar, honestly. Um, the, the air ones, they all kind of give nice bonuses or whatever. I think we are going to go for this one though. Um, yeah, it does fit America a little bit better as well. And we're already kind of focusing on the battlefield support. So let's go for this. Let's get our fighter detection up. All right. Nice. Uh, and then over here, uh, with this other slot, what are we going to do with this? Do we have this open up? Yes, we do. Let's get excavation too. uh, increase our resources. Are we currently training, uh, for anything that we don't need. We do have a surplus of rubber. That's fine. Chromium. Yeah, we don't have a surplus of that. So we're doing good. I know that we got the excavation ones. I didn't know if that had improved at all. Uh, but maybe we don't have uh, rubber or uh, the chromium. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know that we don't have it. either one of those. Uh, let's just take a look here. Oops, that's resistance. Excuse me. Uh, we want resources. Um, and we did get dispersed industry twos. Just kind of want to take a look at what we have here. I know we have a lot of oil, oil aluminum. Um, yeah, tungsten. Okay, we do have a little bit of chrome in here. Uh, but it's definitely something that we're, we're fairly lacking here as the U.S. Uh, rubber and, and uh, the chromium. Okay. Just wanted to see. Uh, we got Dispersed Industry 2s, which is nice. That means our factory is going to be improving uh, their, um, uh, their output considerably. Okay, so we're not quite in 1938 yet. I think we're going to go and get their radio detection now, um, because why not? We'll go ahead and grab that up. Uh, and yeah, let's, let's go ahead and, and keep this thing playing here. 
because uh, I'm trying to make some progress. Uh, we only got about uh, six, seven minutes left of the episode. Uh, so let's see. I, I don't know that we'll get all the way through 1938 here, but uh, let's let's swing over. Amelia Earnhardt has circumnavigated the globe. Quite an achievement. Good job. Uh, over here, they're still, okay, we are still looking at the same national focuses there. Uh, and I think we already looked at everybody. Um, of course, there are the, the new national focuses that came with the uh, DLC. And Japan has now declared war on China that has increased real tension up to 12% here. Okay, interesting. So, uh, not quite high enough to unlock a lot of our national focuses, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, uh, got that. We got the tactical bomber effort, Japanese buildup on the Chinese border. Very, very worrying for sure. Uh, but yeah, we have not unlocked any of that. Though, now that Japan is at war, we can get the war propaganda, which will change our mobilization law to volunteer only, uh, meaning that we will actually be able to recruit some troops. So yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that. That'll bring it up to 1.5%. I think we're currently at 1%. Plus, we have that negative 50% modifier there, which is pretty bad. Uh, we also just got ourselves some uh, better artillery, which is awesome. Uh, do we want to go for the anti-air and anti-tanks right now? Um, yeah, I think we I think we probably will go for those, actually. Yeah, let's, let's go and grab those up. Why not? Uh, let's do the anti-tanks first. I don't know if we're going to use anti-air in this one. Uh, I might just rely on air power. Now, a lot of people you know, say anti-air is not, not all very good. Uh, and I would disagree, guys. Anti-air can be really, really good. And I've already said this in several playthroughs. I'm not going to go exactly uh, over why. But they have some good modifiers besides just shooting down planes. Uh, but yeah, I don't think we're going to have any issue with the air superiority. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really think that that bonus is going to benefit us. So might as well just go for anti-tanks because anti-tanks are still better when it comes to fighting tanks and whatnot. Uh, the Chinese United Front has formed. Uh, so yeah, the communists have now joined forces with uh, the rest of China against Japan. Uh, so we did finally get enough political power. It took us long enough. It took us quite some time to get that. Uh, what do we want to get here? Uh, we could get one of these guys. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure what I'm going for, though. I, I, I believe we should go for the aircraft designer uh, so that we can start researching some of those aircraft because um, I really want to get those fighters going. Yeah, let's let's get the aircraft designer. I think we're gonna go with the light aircraft, the fighters. Um, so that's, I don't want to research those until after we've gotten this. It does kind of suck because I really want to get the ship designer. Um, but you know what? We, we are getting the political power so slowly um, that I, I want to get those planes going, and that should allow us to research that as soon as we have that, I suppose. Uh, we could keep going down this this branch, uh, but let's go ahead and get the Warhawks now, the P-40 Warhawks. Uh, yeah, and this will give us a nice uh, research time for it bonus, and plus they're going to have higher agility and higher max speed. So those Warhawks are going to be really, really badass, uh, which is awesome. And we might even use some of our air experience to create a variant when we first unlock them. Uh, I think we will probably create a variant and get a nice... Um, uh, you know, some really good planes going out there uh, for when we go to war. Uh, we do have our civilian factories aren't doing anything. We should probably get them. We should probably get them working, huh? Uh, let's build. I, I feel like we should keep building uh, civilian factories. Let me just take a look here. Um, our military factories is is really really bad. I suppose we can get a couple military factories, uh, and then we're gonna go back to the the military ones. Uh, let's build in. Um, uh, we'll build right here, I suppose. Yeah, I think that'll work. Uh, I was going to build in, in Arizona or Colorado, but yeah, we're going to build uh, over here in, in Kansas. This, this is where we're going to have our, our military factories. Although we should probably build based on their time, come to think about it. Yeah, probably should. That would probably be wise. Can I build dockyards over here? No, I can't. Okay, so let's let's build the military factory right there as well because they will get a nice uh, modifier there. So we're going to get three military factories, I think. That'll get us up to, you know what, we'll, we'll do five. We'll do five military factories. I think that'd be smart. Let's let's go and get one more over here. Just gonna go off these these bonuses for right now. Um, and anywhere else, uh, let's go. Well, none of these guys have very good infrastructure. Uh, let's let's go one right there and one right there. Okay, is that that's not five? I can't count apparently. I'm a terrible counter. <laughs> so yeah, we now have. Uh, still, it looks like Louisiana is still building up civilian factories as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and get more uh, civilian factories. Can never have too many civilian factories. Uh, we're gonna build these. We're gonna continue building these on the coastline. I think. Uh, let's get a couple going over here. Yeah, let's let's build on that side of things. Uh, over there in the northwest, and we got a little bit of space left over here. So let's keep on building uh, over here as well. I think that'll be good for now. All right, let's let's continue on here. Only got a couple minutes left. Um, I don't think we're gonna make it to 938, guys. Uh, let's see what everybody's working on right now. Uh, Canada is currently doing a dollar a year, man. Okay. Um, UK is the Singapore strategy. They really do seem like they're they're focusing hardcore on Asia. Okay. Uh, that's that's good for us. Um, the carrier focus over here for France. 
that's good because carriers are nice treaty with the ussr so germany's going to work on a treaty with them they're going to attack poland uh trans uh polar flights over here okay um anyway i didn't look at italy uh atlantic fleet oh we don't want them building themselves a fleet can't have that uh as you guys can see the, the nationalists have essentially won over here republic and spain won't last much longer civil war should be over very very soon over here in japan what are they currently working on the sever sino german ties okay uh china uh, they just finished whatever they're working on so i don't know uh but yeah they japan is just wrapping them up ever quickly remember we did get two ticks in the difficulty for japan so they're gonna be really really good uh we just got war propaganda which means we do have a little bit of manpower uh we're gonna have to get to some units building up which i think we're gonna do that in the next episode here because it is uh this one's just about over uh we're just gonna pick a national focus and yeah then we're gonna end it uh so can't get anything else yet uh, world tension just isn't high enough. We need 25% for that one, 30% for there. Uh, but at least we're able to get that, so that should allow us to build some stuff. Uh, we could do reform uh, the Monroe Doctrine, uh, but I kind of think that we should do the fund the Navy. Yeah, I think that might be the best thing to get right now. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do the the fund the Navy because uh, yeah, this doesn't unlock for a while. Uh, so yeah, I'm not worried about that. I think we're gonna do fun, uh, fun the navy so that we can start getting some naval doctrines going. I really want our, our navy to be as powerful as possible, guys. Uh, so everybody should have selected their national focus now. Yeah, issue gas masks over here, uh, which you know this branch of theirs is really really important for them getting some manpower. Uh, so that's good that they're they're going down that one. Uh, France, yeah, they're working on some close air support, air innovations too over here in Germany. Stalin constitution for Soviet Union. Japan, reinforce the Soviet border. Uh, doesn't matter what China's doing because they don't have national focus yet. I think that's one of the biggest problems right now. China is a huge country. Uh, even if they, you know, obviously their role in World War II was, you know, somewhat, you know, it wasn't quite, they, were, they weren't on a level of major power despite their size because they were China, which is not the China that we all know today. Uh, but still, them not having a national focus tree, I think, is, is a tragedy. <laughs> it needs to be added soon. Uh, Canada doesn't haven't picked theirs yet. Uh, South Africa currently working on establish the Atomics Energy Board. Uh, we haven't really looked at Australia at all yet, and they have their own unique national focuses, uh, as we know from our previous campaign. They're establishing the Advisory War Council. Okay, uh, fighter focus over here in New Zealand. Yeah, I've already forgotten Australia's <laughs> national focuses, and I just played with them a few months ago, uh, so it's not shocking that I've forgotten America's as well, because yeah, it's, it's uh, been some time since I played it. I really wanted to know uh, how they get rid of that Monroe Doctrine, or the Monroe Doctrine, excuse me, get rid of the uh, Great Depression. Uh, there it is, remove national spirit. It's right here. I'm an idiot. Uh, it's right here in the beginning. I don't know why I didn't realize that. It's one of the first ones uh, here, but yeah, you can't select this until you're at war. Uh, so that's where it is. Well, I'm glad I figured that out before we left here since, yeah, it makes me look stupid that I don't even know that's there. I figured it out and have to have anybody tell me. Uh, so let's go ahead and end the can the episode. Excuse me, we're ending the campaign here. Yep, we're done done here. Nothing else to see, guys. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and end the episode here, guys. Uh, once again, sorry that we weren't able to do the other series just yet, uh, but I think this one's going to be a lot of fun, or I'm going to have a lot of fun. I don't know how many people are going to watch, but I'm going to have a lot of fun either way because I always enjoy playing this game. Uh, but I hope you guys do join me uh, throughout this campaign. Now, if, if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like. Also, please leave a comment. Uh, I read all the comments, um, and I try to reply to them all as well. Those comments and those likes do help with the YouTube search engine. So, yeah, if you could please leave one, that would be awesome. Of course, if you liked it, if you didn't, then, yeah, I wouldn't expect you to help me at all. You don't want to send people to this channel if you thought this shit was crap. So, yeah, like it leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. And thanks for watching, guys.